everyone, I'm Meredith and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm so excited that you found me and if you're returning, I'm so grateful you've decided to come back and watch more. I love all things luxury. I love luxury shoes, luxury handbags, luxury lifestyle and vlogging. And if they're things that appeal to you, I hope you'll do me a massive favor and hit that subscribe button down below. I am like a hundred subscribers off my goal of 7,000 subscribers by the time I hit my one year anniversary on YouTube, which is the 15th of May for anyone who's interested, 15th of May, 2023, I will have been on YouTube for a year, which wow, did that go quick? Um, and I'm trying desperately to get to 7,000 subscribers so I can kick off my second year on YouTube with a lucky number at the start of my subscriber list. Although I do think I am very lucky regardless. Today's video, I'm going to give you a rundown of how you order Louis Vuitton from the runway. So how that whole process works from the time the collection walks the runway, how clients then order, how long it takes, and then the process behind we ordered this, but it didn't actually get made because that happens often as well. So a lot of you asked for this video when I started to unbox my uh, spring summer 2023 collection that has been slowly trickling in and all the bags are here now, but still some of the ready to wear pieces aren't. Um, but there were a lot of bags that I ordered from that runway that just never went into production. And I still have all the original pictures that I was sent by my um, sales associates. So I wanted to show you what that process is like um, and talk about it a little bit for anyone who is interested in ordering from a runway or see something walk, see something walk the runway and goes, oh, I really want that. Now what do I do? So I'll give you a little bit of information about that. I apologize if I'm a little bit puffy today. Um, anyone who's following me on Instagram, and if you're not, um, I'll throw up my Instagram handle for you. Um, I had a really bad allergic reaction this week to a new vitamin C serum I was trying, um, and I blew up. I just blew up. I didn't even look like me. And I'm still really sore and itchy. Like at the moment, it's all behind my ears. It's all traveled down to the back of my neck. And I know my face is still a little bit puffy and the texture of it is just terrible. So I'm sorry if I, if I look awful today. I've done my best with my makeup, but yeah, it's been a, a rough week for my skin. And even now, like my ears are just so sore at the moment. Um, which is really strange, I know, because I don't put vitamin C serum on my ears, but when I have an allergic reaction, it tends to travel. So it's all down here as well at the moment, which is why I'm wearing something high neck. Um, all right, so let's talk about this process because um, you're not here to talk <laughs> for me to talk to you about my allergic reaction. Um, so a few things to remember. I am clearly Australian. I live in Australia. The process in Australia might differ to processes in other countries slightly. Um, we are also um, most um, fashion houses poor cousins down here in Australia. We don't get access to everything that other countries do. Um, we find it harder to get pieces. We get less stock um, and pieces tend to take forever to come in. So I will often watch collections drop into other countries well before we see it here in Australia. So there are things to, to remember that my process that I'm talking about might differ slightly in your country. Um, the other thing to remember is that generally speaking, not just anybody can order um, from the runway. It, it's not a process that is inclusive um, of everyone. And I, I'm sorry, that just is a fact. If you don't have a relationship with your store or a sales associate, um, the likelihood of you seeing something walk the runway, loving it, and just walking into a um, Louis Vuitton boutique cold and saying, I want to order this piece, it would be, it wouldn't be impossible. Um, I'm certainly not saying don't try, but it would be rare that they would go, oh, okay, let's do that for you when they don't know you. So it, it is generally a process that is only provided to clients um, that they know. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a VIP. You just have to be known. And obviously it's easier if you also have a relationship with a sales associate. So they are things to remember but the process is there. It does exist. So in years gone by before the rise of digital media and so, and social media and um, the now, now, now culture we live in, um, you would only be offered the chance to 
order from a runway if you had attended the runway show. That was the only way you could do it. So unless you had been, if unless you had a high enough status um, to be invited to go watch a runway show, you didn't order from the runway show. You just had to wait till things um, came up orderable, uh, usually a few weeks before the collection actually dropped. Now, since COVID especially, and when no one was going to runway shows, um, there is a whole shift in the way that fashion houses will um, do um, ordering processes from runways. Um, and it's also very much a case of we all watch the runway together. You can watch the runway live. You don't physically have to be there. They will put it up on generally their YouTube channel, on their website. Um, Vogue is always a great source of information. They will um, put the runway up and they will photograph every look that walks, which is fantastic um, when you're trying to really look at the um, outfits that walk the runway because they walk so quickly you can't see them. Vogue take a photo of every single look and put it up on their website which is fantastic. Um, so you can um, now order without going to the show. My dream is to attend a Louis Vuitton fashion show. It would be um, just, I, I can't even explain it. That would be, you know, a Cinderella moment for me. Um, but I don't believe I buy enough in the categories they want me to to be at that point maybe one day we'll see um but i have reached a point where they will say to me hey did you watch the runway is there anything you want to order so th what happens let's go through the steps runway happens the looks walk um and we are then seeing that in real time generally or we see it a few hours after depending on what time differences are like and stuff and vogue is always where i go to to really see the looks because um the show walks too fast for me to really get a good understanding of what these pieces look like so i'll go to vogue and look at each piece um each uh, outfit or look individually so then your sales associates um, will contact you or you'll contact them and say, hey, I saw the runway, really interested in some pieces. What information do you have? Louis Vuitton is especially um, closed about giving out information um, and the information they give you is not to the quality you think it's going to be. So my sales associates will go, all right, cool. This is the information we have from head office, which is incredibly limited. Um, and we can see that these pieces are coming up orderable, which means that you can order them direct from the runway. So not everything on a runway will be orderable. That's important to remember. Someone who attends a fashion show will have a better chance of ordering um, a piece that is not widely accessible to the rest of the world. But for those of us who don't attend the shows, there is a list of things that you can order. So your sales associate will send you through the information they have. And I will go through the information that I got from spring, summer 23, because that was one of my favorite run runways in a long time. Um, and then they will say, okay, orders are going to open at this point, which is usually several hours after the runway show has happened. And they're going to close usually around 48 hours after that. So the window you have in which to place your orders is incredibly small. The orders that are placed will also drive production. So if a lot of people are ordering specific pieces, that will drive production. So if they're seeing a lot of orders for a particular bag that walked the runway, but they weren't sure if they were going to produce it yet, that will help make their decision at head office and go, well, that was really popular. A whole heap of people have pre-ordered it. We should put that in production. So, and by the same token, they might have a bag pinpointed that they want to produce um, and find that there's no orders for it whatsoever. So it, they will then second guess whether or not that's going to go into production. So these pre-orders, this, this ordering system straight from the runway really does drive what will go into production down the track. Um, so the, the process is very convoluted. It is not simple um, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's look at some of the pictures that I got from my sales associate to then base my ordering off because it is not what you think it's going to be. So I'll throw them up and I will attempt to talk over them or I'll put them up somewhere. I've never done this before. We'll make it up as we go. Okay, so this first picture 
first of all, you can see the quality of what we're dealing with. These are grainy photos. They have stamping across it that says this is the property of Louis Vuitton. It's so people like me can't then put it on my social media and show all of you. Um, and I am told at this point to not share this stuff. And that's fine. I, I abide by the rules I'm given. This runway has already, the stock's already in. No one's going to care at this point. But I am told at the point of being provided with these photos, do not share them with anyone and they're grainy and terrible anyway. So you can see this first one was for the MNG clutches, um, which have gone into production. I don't believe all these colors have been made. You can see there's blue, there's red, and there's black. Um, and these are in the micro monogram that came out, that's recently come out. Um, and you can see this actually has um, product codes on it. So sales associates are working with product codes, makes their life easier. And it's got a price. All the prices are in euros because that is the only price you are given. Um, and it's an estimate. <laughs> so it's not the true price. You're given an estimate in which to work with. And that is all. So you are working with um, a pricing system that is not in your currency. So you're taking a punt on what the currency is going to do between the time you order and the time it arrives. And you're also working with an estimate of what they think this is going to actually retail for. So this becomes a problem in two ways because you really have no idea what this is going to cost you even if you order it. Um, these are the only photos you get. So when I look at this, I go, oh, this is a nice bag. What size is it? Can you give me the dimensions? And sometimes they're able to give you the dimensions, so that's fine. Um, and I go, well, what's the inside look like? What's the lining? Are there pockets inside? Is there another strap with this? No idea. <laughs> No idea. You are not provided any further photos than this photo for this bag. I have no idea what this is like on the inside. I have no idea of its capacity. I am merely basing my decision to order this bag off this grainy photo that I have. And that is it. That's it. So that it's, it's a challenge. You've really got to love these pieces. So let's look at the next one. So this is the next picture that I was provided. So these are the S-Lock um, XL bags, which have come in, the Twist Lock XLs, which are also in, and the Key Bell XLs. Um, and you can see these are in reds and blacks. Um, the Key Bell, this particular Key Bell, was not put in produc into production. I have an XL Key, um, key Bell over here, um, but... It, this particular one was a handheld one and it came with a massive key on the side of it and I really wanted one. Um, I actually want it in the Vachetta, which we'll see in a few pictures time. Um, and yeah, it was not, it was not put into production. Um, the S-Lock XL, I did order one in black, but I thought it would be a functioning S-Lock and it is not. And I wasn't happy with that. It was the same with the twist. I also ordered the XL twist, but the twist function on it is not a functioning twist lock. And that at that point for me was a no. So I did order these. I paid deposits. And when they came in, I didn't take them because they were not what I thought they were going to be. I wanted them to be functioning. Please remember that if you are ordering, um, the ability for you to not take something is not always an option. So it depends on who you are and your relationship with the store, I believe, um, as to how much deposit you pay and then your terms and conditions in taking this piece. So I'll come to that at the end. Um, so you can see there's... Um, purple stars on this. I don't know what those purple stars mean. There's a minimum of 20, a maximum of 50 on some things. I believe they're all internal information to the stores about order, how much we need to produce in order to actually make this or how many you need to order as a store in order for us to consider sending it to you. It would all be important internal information. Makes no sense to me. So the next picture, we have the S-Lock XL in the metal. So they did make it in pure metal. And you can see there, they're quoting 18,000 euros for that. And they also have the um, Pochette Clay XL, which I have one of over here. Um, and they were quoting 4,000 euros for that. So um, I will also talk about pricing um, when they come in at the end, but this is what I was provided. So you can once again see these photos are not great. They're, and I don't, this metal one, this is the only photo I have. This is all the information I am given to then commit to spending 18,000 euros on a metal bag. 
I don't know how this functions. I don't know what the inside looks like. I don't know how it will open up because it's metal. Like it, how are they going to concertina that and have it so you can actually get things in? I don't know. This is all the information I have to make a decision about 18,000 euros. So the next one, we have a uh, Ribbit XL and this is all metal again and they want 15,000 euros for that. And there's also the Dauphine, 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 Dauphine? Uh, Lock XL. Not a bag I'm particularly fond of, so I haven't learned to pronounce it. Sorry. <laughs> um, and this is also an XL. Uh, the plaque on the front of it is very big. So that's what the XL in that was all about. Terrible photos. Uh, the next one is the name tag bag and the Rivet SLG. So I have the name tag. It's up here. Um, the luggage tag, I call it. Um, the Rivet SLG is one that I did order and did not go into production. So I thought that was really cool to have a little coin purse um, that was round again and looked like a rivet, but um, it never went into production, which I'm really sad about because I think that would have been a really fabulous piece to have. And then we have the um, MNG bag again in the monogram. I believe this has gone in production. I'm pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I know this bag now exists but in the monogram I'm not 100% sure it's not a bag I've got a lot of interest in so I haven't taken the time to actually look at what they produced um, but I have this feeling that they did do a monogram version correct me if I'm wrong please um, so that was the next one I was sent and then on the next page we have the key bell PM which is up here so it's this one um, this is the key bell that they produced the twist lock XL and the S lock XL. So these are in different colors to the other ones we saw. So we saw a black uh, twist before, this is in a beige, and we saw a red S lock bag, and this is in the black. The uh, Tilsit bag, which is out, I know I've seen a few unboxings going around. So I know this bag was produced and is now in production. Um, so that was clearly a really popular one that they thought was gonna go the distance. And then this page, this page makes me sad. <laughs> So the micro monogram, they looked at the pink in the Speedy 20, which I believe they have made, the side trunk and the Victorine wallet. So the side trunk, I've had a lot of people say to me, hey, you haven't unboxed a side trunk. Do you not have interest in that bag? Are you not going to buy one? What's the go there? And I haven't said anything about the side trunk because I've known for months that I had ordered the pink one. So when the monogram came out, I really loved the bag, but I, I knew the pink had walked the runway. I had ordered the pink. I really wanted the pink. I am a pink person. And then it didn't get produced. So I have thought all this time that I had this beautiful um, pink side trunk coming and then it didn't go into production, which is why I don't have a side trunk yet. And I'm still deciding which side trunk I want. I know I want a side trunk. I love Dale's um, from Dale Addiction. She's got a monogram one and I have um, tried that on <laughs> and I do love it. Um, but I am still deciding if I want a monogram one or if I want something else because I'm still feeling really disappointed that I didn't get the pink one. I had all my hopes pinned on the pink one and now it's not being made. I'm still getting over that. <laughs> Um, you can also see in the micro monogram, they have the loop hobo bag, which I don't believe went into production either. The petite mal, which I also don't believe has gone into production. I certainly haven't seen it. Um, the MNG purse and the zippy wallet. So I think some of those have been made in this black micro monogram. And then you can see that there's a Dauphine MM and it's all in Vachetta. That definitely has not gone in production. I can tell you that right now. The all Vachetta pieces were so limited in what they actually decided to produce. It was really disappointing. But they have obviously made the Dauphine MM in um, Vachetta for the runway and it just didn't go into production. Uh, the next is the Cousine BB um, and that's got all the different colored baubles all over it. I think this has gone into production. Um, I think I might have seen one somewhere along the way, social media, but I may be wrong on that. But these are really expensive. The Cousine BB it, for 3,800 euros. I have I have lots of Cousines, um, I have to say, and I really love them, but I am I really don't buy them anymore because they have become really expensive. Uh, and then we've got a whole page of twists. So you can see the twist lock XLs were going to be made in three colors in the um, brown color, the beige, and the black. Um, and I think most of those colors have actually been made. Um, you can see the quality of the photos. Like, this is what I'm working with. 
And then this page, um, not a lot was actually made in this. So the Cousine XL, which was going to be a massive Cousine, 8,000 euros. <laughs> like for me in Australia, when I look at euros, I basically double it to come out with about what it's going to cost me. Now it's, it's not double, like it would be a little bit less than that, but it's close enough that if I want to do basic math, I'll just go, right, 8,000 euros, about 16,000 Australian. It'll probably come in at about 14 something, I would assume, depending on the day of the um, conversion. But it's a lot of money. So that was a solid no from me. You can see the pochette clay there. The one that I have is there, but they also had it in a reverse monogram, which has never been produced, which is a real disappointment. I know a lot of people really love the reverse monogram. And to be fair, if it came up, I would probably buy it as a collector's piece because I've got this one. I would buy that one. So that was a real disappointment that they only made it in the original monogram, not in the reverse monogram. And then you can see there's a Cousine MM in a glazed. So it's got more of a, um, like a high shine finish to it. You don't see a lot of the Cousine MMs anymore. They're all PMs or BBs now. So the MMs are rare. I've got an MM in black. I think it's a great size, but not for that price. <laughs> um, and then we have Petite Mals. So in the blue micro monogram and the black micro monogram, I have not seen any of these petite mounds surface yet. They may exist in other countries because like I said, Australia is like always the last to get everything. Um, they are beautiful. I do like them. Um, do I think they're worth the money? So 4,800 euros, I double that and I come out at just under 10,000 Australian. I don't know. I don't know if I want one that bad. I really need to see one in the flesh. I do like the hardware on it with the corners. I do like the rounded edges. It's it's a new take on the Petite Mal. So um, I think they're really interesting. Um, whether or not they're interesting enough for me to buy if they actually went into production, I don't know. I need to see one in the flesh. Um, but they look fun. Uh, and then we have more MNG clutches. So here you can see they did one in monogram micro monogram, which is interesting. Like the original monogram colors in a micro version, that would be super interesting to see I think and then the other one there is just the normal monogram so maybe I'll do some research on what ones they actually made of these because like I said it wasn't a bag that overly interested me but they clearly thought it was going to be a big seller because they've done it in so many different colors and styles and offered it up for um, ordering so they thought it was going to be a winner. And then we have the PAXL. So this is um, more of a big bag that was held like by the hand. So it was really like a big handheld tote. Um, and I ordered this because I thought it looked brilliant. I loved it, but didn't go into production, which I was really sad about. It was all VVN. It would have been this, oh, but like steroids, like real, really big, really big handheld tote in this um, exact, um, silhouette, uh, and all VBN, like all the shedder. People would have died because the amount of scratches and watermarks that were going to be on that would have absolutely caused anxiety to most people. For me, I would have loved it. I'm fine with it. And I really wanted one, but didn't go into production. Uh, and the next picture I got was this actual um, bag, so the SLG. So it's quoted at uh, 1,500 euro there, and actually it went pretty much dead on for that. So that was that was a really good um, estimation by Louis Vuitton. It was one of the most accurate ones they had because that was pretty much exactly where it sat. Um, so that one went into production, obviously. And then these were all the different key bells that they made. So they have the key bell XL. So that's the one that I've actually got, the one that goes cross body. Um, in terms of pricing, it, it's pretty accurate. Um, and then they had a key bell XL in black with the giant key on the side. They had a key bell XL in the red, um, which... Uh, also had the key on the side and the key bell and then they had the exact same thing at the end so they've doubled up photos of the black ones there but these key bells were really cool because I loved the massive keys on them uh, this one does not have a key and then we have this um, woven 
um, textured pattern that has come out and I have seen this in store so I know for sure it got made. So there's the Petite Mal there um, and also the MNG Clutch. I believe both of these went into production. I saw the Petite Mal the other night when I was at the Louis Vuitton event that I went to um, and it's fun. It really reminds me of a lot of the um, wicker stuff my mother had from the 70s um, and it's got that real vibe to it. Bit too much orange in it for me but it's fun. Um, if you love color it's fantastic fantastic. Uh, just expensive, I found. So this is the uh, more of the Keybells. Um, so the Keybell XL here, um, the first one, which has the key on the side, the massive key on the side, this is all in Vachetta and this is one that I really wanted. So it was one that I placed an order for. It is a handheld bag. So it was like a loop that you held on to and then the key bell was at the bottom of it. So it was a handheld bag, but it was really cool. And I loved the massive key on the side. I wanted the Vachetta one, didn't go into production. And then you can see the um, key bell XL um, that was handheld. So it's basically this only it had um, a, a strap that came out the top. So it just went over the top like that and you would hold it, but that's pretty much what it looked like. Didn't go into production either. I'm guessing they had to make a choice and they chose this one because it goes cross body to that one. And then they did it in this like bluey aquary color. And then the uh, PA XLs, which were the handheld totes that I talked about, they were going to do it in black and in Vichetta. Didn't do either. And the Keybell XL strap, which is this one, um, which is the one I actually got. And these are the two ones that I did love that neither of them went into production. So the Keybell XL um, there with the big key on the side was the one that I desperately wanted. But I had also said that I would take the one without the key if they got that. Didn't get either. Neither went into production. Um, so they're all the photos that I got. So... You can see that this is a really hard process. So you're getting these photos. You know you have a very short timeline in which to make a decision and place an order. At most, you get like 48 hours, maybe three days if you're lucky. It really depends on time zones and how everything marries up. But your sales associates give you a really firm timeline on... Um, the time in which you have to work with these photos, make a decision and then go back to them. So um, I will screenshot things that I like. I'll ask questions and hope that they have answers. And sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. That's not their fault. Sales associates can only work with information they are given. Um, stores can only work with information they're given from head office. So it's not always a simple process. Um, and you've got to remember that this is a process that as soon as a runway walks, um, it's a worldwide thing. So it's not like oh, Australia watched the runway, well, let's just deal with Australia. Oh, now North America's watched the runway, let's deal with those orders. All of these countries are on the same timeline. Everybody in the world who is interested in this has watched it at the same time, and now they're all trying to place orders and ask questions at the same time. So it's a massive, massive thing that happens. Um so I will screenshot stuff and then ask the questions that I can. Um, and then basically you just decide what you want to order. So I will go, okay, I want these particular pieces. Sometimes like the last runway that walked, they sent me photos and I went, I don't want anything. Like I'll just wait. And that's, that's fine. <laughs> like, there's no issues there. It's not like if you do that once, they're not going to ask you again. It's fine. Um, so I, for this particular runway, I picked about eight bags that I really wanted. I think all up there was about eight. And I sent them off to my sales associates and said, right, these are the ones that I desperately want. And there was a cardigan as well. I really want this cardigan. So they came back to me and said, cardigan's not orderable. It, they're not doing it direct from the runway. We're just going to have to wait and see if it goes into production. Fine. All the bags I had ordered had come from the photos that they had provided me. So head office had pinpointed them as bags that they thought they were going to produce. Therefore, they were orderable from the runway. Um, if I had seen something on the runway that then they couldn't provide a photo for, it would have been like my cardigan. We're just going to have to wait and see if it goes into production. They're not offering it up at this point. And that happens. But all the bags I chose were chosen from the photos they sent me, not from runway photos. So I knew that I could order them. So my sales associates take my photos and then get everything ready on there and they go, right, for me, for me in my position at Louis Vuitton at the Sydney store, they said, okay, you're going to, this is your order. This is your 
estimate of how much this is going to cost. And we're going to then take a 50% deposit in Australian dollars. <laughs> so it's very convoluted. So they'll work out how much in euros all their estimates are. And then they do a conversion rate on the day that I need to pay the deposit. And I will pay 50% of the euros in Australian dollars. So generally for me, I go, okay, well, this is how much they're quoting in euros. That's how much, like if it's 1900 euros, they, they're saying that's going to cost me. For me to pay the deposit, I work on 1900 Australian, if that makes sense. So that's how my head works with maths. I go, well, if I convert the euros to Australian dollars, I've got about 50% of what I've got to pay. So I will then pay a 50% deposit and that's um, then receipted in my in the system at Louis Vuitton as a um, deposit without stock essentially. So that's they're holding that money. They, they place the orders for what I want and then we all sit and wait. <laughs> we all just hang about for several months while we wait for these to be produced. So it's generally um, several months between a runway and when a drop happens. It can be nine months, it can be six months, it can be three months. It depends on when um, they're having their runways and um, when they're planning to release stock, but it's always months. So you've paid all this money, you think you're getting these, these items that you've ordered and we all just hang about and wait. In the meantime, you watch lots of things pop up on social media. Um, lots of There's lots of great Instagram accounts who will put up stuff um, as they're starting to be produced. So you're starting to see stuff come down the line before the, um, before the uh, drop actually happens. So, you know, like Foxy LV, for example, like you'll see stuff on her Instagram well before it drops into the store. So you're getting a feeling for what's being made. So you're watching it all and you're going, oh, this is great. Like I can see some of the bags I've ordered are coming through. I can see the pictures of them. That's fantastic. And you start to get a little bit excited. And then in my case, you start short sell. So you go, hey, when it's coming, when it's coming, when it's coming, I'm really excited. And with this drop, it was so slow. <laughs> So slow. So um, then the actual drop happens and they know what's being produced. And sales associates then need to go back to their clients and go, hey, you know how you really love those pieces? Well, we're not making them. <laughs> and they've got to explain this to you. So that would be a really hard job, I would think, because if you have cared enough about a piece to order it from nothing but a grainy photo and pay a deposit that is just kind of a guesstimate, you're really pretty committed to this piece. You really want this piece. It's not just, a, oh, I'll see what happens because that's a really big commitment. It's You're taking such huge risks for something that you can't see or touch, that you have very limited details about, that the photos are grainy and that your pricing is just a guesstimate. So you really got to kind of love these pieces to attach yourself to them. So these poor sales associates have to go back and go, hmm. so Meredith, you know that, pink side trunk that you have been obsessed with and waiting on and you love and you've paid half of the deposit for, they're not making it. <laughs> so that's then a conversation that needs to happen. So in my case, I went from like eight pieces to three very quickly. The upside to that was that the 50% deposit I had paid on all of those pieces more than covered the three that I actually got um, plus it covered a few other pieces that I ended up buying in terms of ready to wear. So I ended up with credit because of that. There were a couple of pieces, like I said, the S lock bag and the XL twist that, um, I had paid deposits on that actually did go into production. And when I looked at them, I went, no, I don't want them. They were not what I thought they were going to be. So I, as far as I was concerned, I wasn't going to take something that was not a realization of what I had actually been offered or thought was offered to me. And my store was fine with that. They went, that's fine. We're never going to force you to take something that you don't want or hate. That may well be specific to my um, place within my store. And I, I, I always get really um, concerned when I start talking about like my status in my store, because people tend to have a go at me about, well, you're not a VIP. No, I don't believe I'm a very important person, but within Louis Vuitton at my store, I am a VIC, a very important client to that store. I am not the most important client. There are people who are 
probably help the chain from me and that's fine. I don't aspire to be the, the top client at Louis Vuitton. I don't have that kind of money. I, but I do appreciate the fact that I have a place within the store where they will offer me the opportunity to do these things and they will work with me on stuff and they um, appreciate me as a client. Um, I believe they appreciate all their clients, but in different ways. Um, so they didn't make me take the pieces that I didn't want and I didn't have to pay 100% deposit to get these. There are different stores that do it different ways and Louis Vuitton might do it differently for other clients. I have experienced other stores and other brands who have made me pay 100% deposit to order something um, and then it has come in in like mass amounts. Like I didn't have to give them my money. I could have just bought it when it came in, but I was made to feel like I should order it because they're only going to make like two of these and you might not see one. And then I'm sitting here and everybody's got one and there's, they're just sitting on the shelves of the store. And I've stopped doing that now at that particular brand because it annoyed me. Louis Vuitton, um, are no different to that. I could have, I could quite easily walk into store at the moment and buy any of the three bags that I have ordered from the runway, but I don't know that. And I love Louis Vuitton. It is my first love. I am a collector of that brand first and foremost. So I knew that if they only made a limited amount of clays and I didn't get one, that it would like it would upset me. Like I'd have to then like physically uh, go hunting for one in the resale market, which was really going to annoy me. So there was talk that these would be quite limited. They may well be quite limited and people just aren't buying them, but I can easily buy one off the website at the moment. So I didn't want to chance that with these pieces because I loved this runway. This runway was one of my favorite runways I have seen in a long time. It was so 90s. It was so me. Um, it spoke to me. I wanted pieces from this. So I, I did the process. I went, whatever, I'll just order it. Um, so your ordering ability and your um, terms and conditions around those orders may well change depending on who you are within your store, your relationship with your sales associate and what that particular store or country is doing with their orders. So you may well be required to pay 100% when you order. And once again, it's a guesstimate. So if it comes out that you owe them a little bit more money, that can happen. If it comes out that you've got some store credit, that can happen as well because it is just a guesstimate and it is based on... Um, the uh, um, currency conversion rate that day. Um, so these things happen. Uh, and then you may well be backed into a corner with needing to take the item. And then I, I believe you can return it. So realistically, if you showed up, you paid 100% for it, you didn't like it, you can probably return it. Um, but if this is your first time ordering and you're returning the item straight away, your chances of being able to go through this process again are probably going to be diminished because of that. They're like, well, we went through all this trouble and then you didn't even take the piece or you returned it. So yeah, that those things can happen. So it's not the easiest process in the world. It can be a little bit stressful because you're really working on limited, limited information and you're working in a very short time frame. And if you've got other things in your life, like I do, like a company and children and, you know, everybody's got other stuff going on in their life. When you're looking at this and going, oh my God, I'm on a time frame and I don't really have a lot of information to work with. And I've just got to like, it's a leap of faith. I've just got to leap and hope that this works out. It can be a really stressful process. And I imagine it's incredibly stressful for the sales associates who are going through it on their end as well. Um, this can't be easy to deal with clients who are all trying to order stuff all at the same time and they're working on limited information themselves. So it's it's a it's a frantic process. And then there's it's it's crazy. Frantic, we do nothing for months, and then frantic on the other end is what it feels like. Um, so that's how the process works for ordering from a runway. I haven't got anything coming from runways at the moment. The last couple of runways that have walked since the spring, summer 23, I haven't ordered anything from. I haven't felt the need to order anything from. That doesn't mean I'm not buying stuff. I'm just waiting for stuff to come in and then looking at it and going, oh, I really like that. Now I'll buy it. I've got a real thing for ready to wear at the moment. I'm really loving um, ready to wear, especially from Louis Vuitton. So um, that's kind of where my head's been. Um, and I know that I'm going to Paris in September um, and there is a very, very special trip 
planned while I am in Paris. Louis Vuitton are doing something incredibly special for me that I am so grateful for and so excited about. So if you are interested to see what they're going to organize for me, make sure you are subscribed down below because I will be vlogging that trip and most especially that experience that they have set up for me. So hang about for that. It is, I just... I don't have words. I'm so excited. So excited. It's a dream come true. Um, so yes, that's, that's fantastic. And make sure you're subscribed for that. So, uh, yeah, that, because I know I'm going to Paris, I am not, um, necessarily all over everything that's being released at the moment. My money at the moment is being saved for that trip. I know I want to buy several things while I'm there. It's important to me that I buy something from Louis Vuitton in Paris. It's something that, uh, important that I buy something from Dior, something from Chanel and something from Hermes because they're all French fashion houses and it's like visiting the mothership. <laughs> I want to go visit the mothership and buy something. So yeah, my, I, there are, have not been as many unboxings. There's been plenty of unboxings, but there haven't been um, the big hauls that I was doing last year because I know that I have Paris coming um, and London coming and I'm really excited about that. So yes. So I hope you found this rambling video, which I'm sure has gone forever at this point. God only knows how long it's going to be. I'm so sorry if you're all bored. Um, but I hope you found it informative, if nothing else, to see the process um, that we go through when we order from the runway. Please, if you see something, walk the runway and you love and adore it and you desperately want it and you don't want to take the chance go in to a Louis Vuitton store if you don't have a sales associate. If you do have a sales associate, get in their face. Listen, I walked the, I listen, I, I watched the runway. I really love this piece. Can you help me? What's the process? But you've got to be on it. As soon as that runway walks, you've got to be texting a sales associate. I saw the runway. I love this look here. I screenshot it. I want this. Is this going to be orderable? I know I can order it. Can you help me with this? Get in their face. It also gives you stature within um, with, with your sales associate that then you're showing them that you're interested in this stuff straight from the runway and it will probably elevate you in their head and they'll go, oh, I remember that person really loved the last runway. Maybe I should contact them after this runway and send them photos so that they know what's orderable because then you're kind of moving where you sit within the store. You don't just come in and have a look and buy whatever. You're interested to the point that you're watching the runway show and showing a strong interest in pieces. They will then go, you're an important client. I'm going to, I'm going to really help you out. But even if you don't have a sales associate, if there's something you love, I always say get in people's faces. You have to make yourself known. Walk into the store the day after runway and go, I swatched the runway yesterday. I love this piece. Can you help me with this? If you can't help me, is there another sales associate here who can? Can I ring customer service and have a chat to them about it? Get in people's faces. The more you make yourself known, the more information you're given. There's a saying that the squeaky wheel gets the oil. The louder you shout, the more people pay attention. Um, it, it's just a fact. So get in their faces and say, I'm interested. Look at me. Help me. I'm here. I want to give you money. And you generally find you'll get a response that way. I hope you found this um, video informative. If you want more videos like this where I explain processes like this to you, please let me know. Um, I'm happy to do them. I'm happy to share knowledge where I can, um, but please take it with a grain of salt. I am in Australia. This is the process that I have. I am not saying it translates to every country or every city. That would be silly. Australia is the poor cousin. We always are. <laughs> If you have liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. It means a lot to a content creator when you hit that subscribe button. Please also hit the little bell notification so you know when I've uploaded videos, which is usually three times a week. I'll also throw up my Instagram handle for you. I put lots up in real time, lots around my collection, my day-to-day -day life, outfits of the day, that kind of stuff. So please come follow me over on Instagram. I hope wherever you are in the world today, you are having a fabulous day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>